Hello. It's anniversary time. Not the usual sort of anniversary, however. 21 years ago, on the 29th of March in 1999, a dedicated group of 84 musicians, both professional and amateurs, and a large support team came together in the Cathedral of the Holy Trinity in Auckland to produce my oratorio. It was called The Living Word to an audience of around 500 people. Getting this work to a point where an idea became a reality took me around six years. A couple of years after the cathedral performance, I made an effort to put together a few video clips that I hope would give some background to the whole project. It's very strange today to look back at this material after 21 years, but despite doubts and reservations, I think it's time to make it public. After all, it tells an important part of the history. At the first performance of The Living Word, we were able to get a good sound recording which was amazing considering that we had very little time to prepare this work. We hardly ever got a complete rehearsal and the performance lasted nearly two hours. At the same time, we also got a video. But when we came to look at it after the performance, we were dismayed to find that the soundtrack had been disconnected. So here I was, I had a good quality sound recording and a video with no soundtrack. Well, back in those days, it, it might have been possible to hire studio time uh, to edit the soundtrack and bring it into sync with the video, but that was really expensive. There was no possibility of using home computing in those days. So the video tapes lay in a bottom drawer for many years. Eventually, the, the, the home computer, the power of home computing, uh, developed to the point where I was able to bring together those resources. But during that period of time, formats had changed and it wasn't really possible or feasible to produce a really good uh, DVD of it. So, again, the edited material just stayed sitting on my computer. Well, today, the world is almost shut down because of the coronavirus. And Easter is a time when traditionally some of the great music of the Christian church has been presented. Yet it's unlikely that today that will be a possibility in most communities. So what I intend to do is to set up a YouTube channel, which I'm going to devote to the Living Word. And on that channel, I'm going to post the background material and also I'm going to post all the songs that were a part of that original performance. There'll be a dedicated Facebook page also called The Living Word, where I hope the community will be able to interact with us. I'm looking forward to hearing other people's opinions and, and memories of the, of the day. In fact, we've had several performances and I, I welcome all of those who've been a part of those performances to join us. It will take quite a bit of time to download what's about 25 songs. So I'm going to put a few songs on each day between now and Easter Sunday. And that will give us all an opportunity to listen and consider what was done and to comment on it. I'm really interested in connecting with those of you who've been a part of this performance. 21 years is a long time. I doubt if we'll have another 21 years to consider it. So I hope you enjoy the material and I hope uh, that you take the opportunity to look at yourselves and see how much you've developed and grown in your musical talents and in your various other interests over those years. God bless you. How does it work like the living word get airtime on national television?
An Auckland high school teacher has realised a musical dream. Chris Archer composed one of music's most challenging and complex forms, the oratorio, and last night it made its debut in an Auckland cathedral. Anthony Torbett reports. It's taken six years of late-night labour for Avondale College teacher Chris Archer to realise his musical passion in Auckland's Holy Trinity Cathedral. Oratorios are complex choral works. Chris Archer's is based on the Gospel of St John with a lot of help from his friends and computers. I started using a software program that actually allowed me to publish what I'd done, listen to individual music lines. Staging the oratorio cost two and a half thousand dollars and he had to convince 80 singers, musicians and well-known soloists like Kenneth Cornish to perform for free. The show also involved his wife and five children. It is neat, it's a really good thing for family to do together. I think everyone pulling in, you can use everyone's skills. And... But last night it all paid off as 400 people turned out to hear Chris Archer conduct his musical dream. Talbot, one network news. Someone once said that it takes a village to raise a child. And the same idea holds true for a performance like the one which you have just seen on the TV news clip. At an early stage in the project, we got some coverage in the local press. The TV segment did not air until after our performance. So while it gave us a brief moment of fame, it did not directly assist our promotion. I'd completed most of the score by the end of 1997, but I could not persuade anybody to produce my work. So at the end of 1998, I decided to take a leap of faith and produce it myself. The TV announcer got one thing nearly correct when he said that I persuaded a large group of my friends to perform for free. Actually, it wasn't for free. The single performance cost considerably more than the $2,500 reported. Hiring cathedrals, expensive sound equipment, as well as printing programs and tickets is not a cheap exercise. Much of the credit for getting started must go to Kathy Hennigan. Kathy is a respected violin teacher and a close family friend, and she agreed to help me organize the orchestra. We finished up with an amazing group of teachers and amateur players and students. The backbone of the oratorio production was the festival choir. Some of the volunteers were already singing in established choirs. Some people had never sung before. Along with a copy of the vocal score, we gave each of them a CD of their particular vocal line to take home and learn. Behind the scene, we had a team, technical and support workers, who looked after the sound and video, and setting up the stages and generally made the event work. In total, we had about 84 people working together to pull off this performance. The score placed heavy demands on the endurance of the soloists. There were a lot of words to sing. The four soloists did an outstanding job. They brought a wealth of experience, showed us just what first-rate professionals could do with the raw material that I provided them with. The soprano singer was Lindsay Freer, who was well known and is well known as a broadcaster and spokesperson for Catholic Communications in New Zealand. She also has extensive experience as a soloist in opera, oratorio and recital work. Kenneth Cornish was well known nationally for singing oratorio and light opera. His cool professional competence set the tone for the whole production. Before singing The Living Word, Marie Horton Morrow had recorded for Radio New Zealand and had sung with the New Zealand Opera, but this was her first experience of singing oratorio and she enthralled us with her rich contralto voice. Robert Wurrimu is a familiar voice both in New Zealand and Australia. He has performed alongside distinguished New Zealand performers like Dame Alvina Major and Dame Tariq Takano, and today continues to build a reputation with his extraordinary baritone voice.
took us nearly two hours to perform this work. After the final Amen had resounded through the cathedral, we received a standing ovation, which was well deserved for all those people who had shared their talents and efforts to make this premier performance happen. Singers, players, and support people had given everything they had to produce an extraordinary event. The performance was something of a musical miracle. It was not flawless, but we navigated most of the hazards and finished with a complete performance. In thanking the performers, support people, after the performance was over, I told them that in the future, other people might indeed achieve a better performance than we had. But nobody would ever have the honour of doing it first. That honour was theirs. <laughs>